Hello everybody. Um, today uh, we are going to talk about uh, something related to doing experiments and um, uh, it's kind of when you do uh, like an experiment many times just to see if your uh, results are uh, reproducible or just uh, the experiment doesn't work well. So uh, usually you get the like different results from the same experiment and actually this is not something wrong just uh, because you have some experimental error and uh, you'll have some differences in the values so uh, actually to uh, uh, get a result that represents all these uh, results that you got from the experiment like to get one number to say that this, this is the uh, result of my experiment then you need to uh, do something it's called getting the average of these numbers and uh, by doing this you can say that uh, this uh, uh, experiment is g is gonna give this results at these conditions. Um, so uh, we have here uh, two experiments. This is experiment number one, and this is experiment number two. And you have uh, five runs. Each run gave different results here, and there are five uh, results here. And actually, what we're gonna do now is to get the average. And average, as we see from this. Uh, um uh, equation uh, it is the summation of the values that you have divided by the number of uh, experiments that you did so if you want to calculate n we can use one uh, function here it's called count uh, so count just uh, it, it counts the number of cells that you uh, choose so in this case it uh, automatically counts it five you can you can just put a five if you want but just uh, if you in, in case you have a uh, number a bigger number of uh, experiments it's gonna be easy instead of uh, writing something wrong and then the average is gonna be the submission of these results divided by the number of runs and then the average is 25 we're gonna do the same here uh, just copy and paste it will do the the same thing and you'll find that this is the count and this is the sum and you find that this um, uh, to to the so the average is now done and do you find that the average of these two experiments is gonna be uh, is is the same it's twenty five and um, now we can we can say that okay the two experiments are gonna give the same result and this is the average and and stop but actually if you take a closer look at these results here you'll find that this is twenty one twenty four twenty five twenty six and twenty nine which are kind of closer close to this twenty five the average that you got so you can say that it the um, it's kind of represents these th the results well uh, however if you look here you find that there is 4 and 48 and um, it's pretty difficult to say that this 25 uh, represents 4 and 48 um, you can you can find it uh, not logical and that's why um, there is another uh, parameter that you um, calculate and this parameter is the uh, uh, measure that you can tell is this average representative or not re representative and this parameter is called the standard deviation which is calculated from this equation so um, actually it will tell you uh, like uh, you, ca you can you can see from like in different uh, papers or, or, or in uh, scientific uh, articles it says that your average or, or the experiment is giving let's say 25 plus or minus 5 and this 5 after the plus or minus is the standard deviation it's, it shows you how far the standard deviation or the, or the, the numbers from the average that you are calculating so if the standard deviation is high it, it, it means that your, your uh, average is not really representing your results but if it's small it means that your average is representing so um, let's see what we have here it says that x minus x bar x bar is the average that we just calculated and then is the number of, uh, of cells <coughs> sorry and this is the the s square and we'll get the square root of this to get the standard deviation so um, the standard deviation in this case is gonna be the summation of uh, or we can we can do this on a separate uh, column it is uh, this minus x bar which is the average and we will press f4 just to freeze this and and this is to the power of 2 and here we go and we'll do the same for the other guy just to uh, be done with this 
Okay, so we now have this x minus x bar power 2, and we will just get the sum of this. Um, um, divided by n minus 1. And this is the standard deviation, but we need to get the square root of this because this is the s square. So we will use the square root function. And now the standard de deviation is 2.915. Um, let's do it here for this other experiment. It's now the square root is calculated from these and from this. So we are now good. And <coughs> you see that this is giving standard deviation of 19.27. So in the first experiment, our, our average or the result is 25 plus or minus 2.9, which is pretty good. But in the, in the other case, it's 25 plus or minus 19.3, which is like doesn't make any sense. So in this case, you can tell that the second experiment is not good and the results are not con consistent. But in the first case, the, the results are really consistent. Um, so this is how you can do the calculations uh, using these functions. But there is something that Excel can, can make your life much easier if you, if you know it. Uh, you can do the average and the standard deviation uh, using one function without doing all these uh, calculations. If you just press average or use the, the function average, uh, average uh -huh, and then you just choose these cells, it's going to give you the average and the standard deviation, it's STDEV and you just highlight the, the same uh, cells and this is what we get. If you if you repeat this for the second experiment, it's going to give you the same. This is the average and this is the standard deviation. So in this case, uh, you don't need to go through all these uh, columns and all these calculations. You just use the function and it will take care of everything. So this is something that's pretty cool about Excel. You don't need to. I just showed this to let you know how, you, how, how these are calculated. But you don't need to do all this. You can go use the functions and then you're, you're fine. Um, another thing I'm going to show you is uh, related to the average and the standard devi deviation. Uh, we have here an experiment of reaction and you have uh, the, the reaction rate uh, at different temperatures for different catalysts. And now you have these results. You have uh, six runs for uh, seven uh, temperatures. And you now need to represent this graphically and show your uh, results. And actually, it's not going to be good to plot seven plots on the same um, uh, on, the th on the same graph. So what we're going to do is exactly what we did. We will calculate the average and the standard deviation and then see how we can put this in a graph. And it's pretty, pretty cool. Um, so the average, as we know, uh, is this function. You are going to get the average. And the standard deviation and we will repeat this for the uh, cells sometimes it, it shows this uh, green uh, uh, color at the corner just to tell you that there's some maybe something wrong because it doesn't understand that this is something different from those so it just wants to take this 100 in, into consideration just to let you know that maybe you, you forgot this but we, we know what we're doing so actually what we know we're gonna plot now is the temperature and the average so the average is kind of showing that your results are or this is the average of your, of your results sorry so let's go back and go um, do this scatter thing and uh, and now you have your results. It's the average. And actually, I'm not going to do all these uh, uh, axis titles and all this stuff because it's uh, just a waste of time. So we have here this axis is the rate and this is the temperature. Uh, but now what we show is just the average. We didn't show the standard deviation. Uh, and this, the way you can show the standard deviation graphically is using what's so-called error bars. And error bars are just some bars that you have uh, at each dot just to show you how far uh, this standard deviation are from the the average. And it's pretty easy. You can you can go to layout here when you choose or highlight the uh, table. Uh, I mean the the graph. And then you go to error bar. There are a couple of uh, options, but I prefer to go to more error bar options. And then you have this window, and it asks you what is the. Oh, let's put it here. 
um, what's the error amount uh, you, you will have directions in both and you, you can have cap or no cap you can change the line color shadow and all these stuff you don't want to play with these stuff now but if you want to go to custom because th you have your values you don't need excel to do anything and you can choose this for the positive and negative and then press close um, i'm sorry okay and then close and what you see now is at each point it has these error bars which are actually the standard deviation it shows you how this value is varying up and down so you can know that in this case the error bars are small so this is, has a stand, uh, small standard deviation which is this point and this point has a lower standard deviation. the maximum standard deviation is at this uh, 350 which is this uh, point so it is just a way of showing graphically your data the average and the standard deviation so it's kind of showing all your data just in one single graph um so that's all for today thanks